So where next? The genetic markers show that one branch from the Middle East made its way swiftly into India. This small group traveling down into India from the north was so successful that their numbers quickly multiplied. They soon swamped nearly all traces of the previous coastal migration. A second wave headed for China. Here, bounded by sea and mountains, they remained in isolation, developing a distinctive appearance. They were also to become the largest nation on Earth. But the genetics reveal more. It appears that East Asia was settled by two waves of migration, one going to the north and one going to the south of these mountain ranges, a bit like an ancient genetic pincher movement, still visible in the blood of the people living there today. These were massive undertakings. In the virtual blink of an eye, mankind had reached as far afield as India and China. In comparison, it's only a short hop into Europe. You'd expect humans to have settled in there, too. But they hadn't. While humans were peopling Asia, in Europe, they were nowhere to be seen. People living in equatorial Africa are living in a hot environment. The skin must have been able to sweat very efficiently so that people could keep cool. And also because that skin was naked and therefore was prone to damage from ultraviolet radiation. And so the skin of our ancestors was dark, full of the natural sunscreen, melanin. Sunlight produces vitamin D, vital for healthy bones. At the time my ancestors first ventured into Europe around 35,000 years ago, their skin was already getting paler in order to absorb more light. Almost certainly the first people to go into Europe were were quite lightly pigmented. This is because Europe with latitudes in the in the 40s to low 50s is well a region of fairly low ultraviolet radiation throughout the year. Populations living in Europe who were not coastal populations had to have fairly deep pigmented skin in order to allow enough ultraviolet B rays into their skin to synthesize the necessary amount of vitamin D that they needed. Coastal populations were very interesting because if they had access to fish, a very vitamin D rich food source, then they could in a sense afford to be a bit darker than their hinterland brethren. But one of the things that we have to think about when we talk about the populating of Europe is that the people who went into especially some of the northern areas had certainly well, they were wearing clothes. They weren't naked. They were covered with furs or some, some kind of simply sewn clothes. And so they had less of their skin actually exposed to the sun. So that's something we have to take into account too. When you wear clothes, you have less skin exposed and the skin that is exposed has to do more work in synthesizing vitamin D. The Ice Age was to cut these first Europeans off eliminating any contact with the rest of the world. In isolation, they developed distinctive traits. Their hair color changed, the shape of their noses changed, even their height. Today, people with European ancestors, like me and these French bull players, look pretty different from our distant relatives. Why had it taken our ancestors so long to arrive here? Whatever kind of journey they made, it's clear that they developed a whole new range of life skills along the way. So why did it take my ancestors 10,000 years to get to Europe from the Middle East? And why had they changed so much? The accepted theory was that they made their way around the Mediterranean and up through Turkey. Then, our research threw a wrench in the works. 
Until relatively recently, we had no reason to doubt that the first Europeans had followed a direct route out of the Middle East. And then, quite by chance, we uncovered evidence that they'd come from somewhere else entirely. So my European ancestors hadn't taken the obvious route from Africa via the Middle East. Instead, they had passed through Central Asia 40,000 years ago. That was why they had taken so long to reach my homeland. But why would they do that? How did my ancient family from the Middle East wind up here, in this wilderness? William Calvin thinks that yet again the weather played a critical role. Worldwide, you're getting droughts, you're getting forest fires, but the next year you're getting a lot of grass and a lot of grazing animals. And that's opportunity for the, the humans that survived the, the crash. But there's more. My genetic trail tells me that around 15,000 years ago, a tiny group of these Chukchi's ancestors survived to make an impossible leap into the new world. A journey which began with Niazov's family in Central Asia, then moved east along the length of Russia, left the ancestors of these incredibly tough Chukchi poised to conquer a new continent. But there was a seemingly impassable barrier to their route. The frozen reaches of the Bering Sea separate Russia from the Americas. We're here at the Bering Strait, and it is unbelievably cold here. Clogged with ice for about six months of the year, not even an icebreaker can get through. And yet we know that the ancestors of the Native Americans made it through here about 15,000 years ago at the height of the last ice age. How could they have made a trip like that? I followed the trail of the first humans from Africa to the eastern tip of Russia. I've met their descendants, the Chukchi. But blocked from reaching America by the Bering Sea, I can go no further. Yet I know the blood of these Arctic herdsmen connects them to Native Americans. How did they get there? In an ironic twist, the Ice Age that drove us out of Africa now provided the Chukchi's ancestors with an escape route. As temperatures fell and sea levels dropped, a new landmass called Beringia was exposed from beneath the Bering Sea. This new land connected the Russian Far East to Alaska. The reindeer headed for new pastures. The few survivors followed them, taking mankind into uncharted territory, into the new world. The sea level was, was very much lower about, you could build a 40-story building, <laughs> you know, to tell you how much the sea level had changed. But they couldn't go very far. They were sort of stuck in northern Alaska because of all the ice. And behind them, things weren't much better. As the Ice Age came to an end, sea levels rose again, marooning the first Americans on a tiny pocket of land. Yet they survived. An escape route appeared. The first Americans arrived here only about 13,000 years ago. And they probably walked from Alaska down a, a corridor that existed certainly by 11,000 years ago, uh, along the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. There may have still been ice to the east and the west, but there was an ice-free corridor that they could have walked down when they arrived in North America. It was essentially an empty environment from their perspective with lots of rich resources. A journey that had begun in Africa, divided in Central Asia, had now reached the last continent. For thousands of years, they had endured the most extreme conditions on Earth. And now, this branch of mankind had found a new home. Our ancestors were pretty tough people. They'd survived drought, famine, and an ice age in order to get this far. Yet our genetic results tell us that the first group to make it through to the Americas had been whittled down to as few as 10 or 20 individuals. Today, their descendants are carrying, written in their DNA, evidence of those hardships thousands of years ago. But when they did get through, what was their reward? A land of plenty. They'd never had it so good. <laughs> 